ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد we begin by praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with praises and exaltations that indeed only he is worthy of and we begin by sending his salawat and his salamat his blessings and his peace upon the last messenger muhammad ibn abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam then we begin ya ikhwan wa akhawat brothers and sisters barakallahu feekum by firstly thanking the brothers for organizing this small reminder insha'Allah ta'ala for indeed uh, I'm not capable of giving anything but a small reminder with the level of knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon me and we thank the brothers for bringing this topic the topic which has been given to me is motivation for worship so we begin ya ikhwan firstly by thanking the brothers for really finding a very interesting title for a very simple talk and alhamdulillah in their raghba in their desire to increase the people attending sittings of knowledge sittings of benefit we find as an ada as a habit many people finding these very interesting very interesting titles to give uh, talks very interesting titles to raise the uh, suspicions or to raise the desire of people to come to these talks but the topic is a very simple topic and I'm going to begin by while doing some research on another topic the topic of the relationship between interest and slavery I came upon some articles which were interesting. And these articles laid out something which you find the western religious world, the religious aspects of the west, regardless of whether or not they are Christian or they are Jewish or they are uh whatever religious ideals they follow, whatever religious faith they hold, including the Muslims that they're finding themselves at a challenge on giving da'wah in a world which is becoming increasingly unreligious a world in which faith is decreasing in its role daily because the daily needs of men are more fully available where in those parts of the world where wealth is not this spread out so it's limited only 
a very small number of people have the wealth. And when we speak of wealth, we mean that wealth which will suffice, meaning that someone can go home and he can with ease house himself, clothe himself, feed himself, and his family. So in the Western world, we find that this is very common, or more common than it is in the eastern parts of the world. So since this is becoming the case, you find faith and religion is, pay, is playing an increasingly yani decreased role in their lives. Because they find themselves not having to depend, or they think they are not depending on their Lord anymore. They don't have to depend on their Lord in their minds, because I can go out, I can work, and I get my paycheck, and I can provide for my family. So the time I was spending giving in worship to my Lord, now I can spend that time in something else because I no longer have that need. So what the religious aspects, now we're talking generally here now, what the religious aspects have started doing is giving them motivation. Why should you be religious? Why should you be religious? What do you get from being religious? And since wealth is abundant now and people are thinking about now, the answer has started, has started to come in aspects of this life. Why should you be religious? You should be religious because if you are not religious, you will not be moral in this life. You will not be good in this life. That's why you should be religious. It's sort of like saying you should be religious because so you can be religious. They're not finding the exact motivation that the people need to become religious. And the Muslims, they are also falling into this. We are explaining the tenets of our religion as they are related to this life. So when we explain to the non-Muslims, and we do this abundantly. We explain to the non-Muslims why we cannot drink alcohol. Why we cannot eat pork. Why do we not deal with interest? When we explain this to them, we remove the core reason why we do not do these things and we explain little minute reasons. We do not eat pork because it is bad for you, it does this to you. We do not drink alcohol because of this or because of that. And the truth is, na'am, these are reasons. But this is not the core reason. The core reason why we do not do these things is simply put, because Allah does not allow us to do these things. This is the simple reason. This is the reason the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum did not do it. Because our Lord has disallowed us from this act. Now the issue came up, going back to these articles, was there was a study done on does atheism increase immorality? Meaning with the increase of atheism, does that mean that if someone is an atheist, that he will be immoral? We're, we're talking in Western aspects now. And they found that that is not necessarily true. Just because someone is an atheist, does not mean he will be immoral. Does not mean he will steal, it does not mean he will lie. It does not necessarily mean this. So now, especially the Christians, they find themselves in a hard spot. Because this was their underlying reason for being religious. So us as Muslims, we do not want to fall into this trick. This is not the reason why someone should be religious. So that he does not lie. So that he does not steal. He does not eat interest. He does not take the rights of people. This is not the reason. This is part of being religious. It is not the reason you should be religious. And there are two ayat. 
both ayat in Juz Amma. So simply put, inshallah, all of the brothers should know these ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْأَوَىٰ فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَىٰ He says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ As for the one who remembers standing in front of his Lord. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ He fears that day. He is reminded that one day I will stand in front of Allah. وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْأَوَىٰ And once he remembers that, he stops himself from fulfilling his desires. Those desires that are haram. Those desires that are not beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his motivation for stopping this sin, from stopping his disobedience, was remembering his Lord. Remembering Allah. That one day I have to stand in front of Allah. وَذَكَرَ اسْمَ رَبِّهِ فَصَلَّى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-A'la, He remembers the name of His Lord and He prays. So Islam, it does not call for empty action. Islam, it does not call for empty action. Action which is not based, which does not have a solid foundation in the remembrance of Allah. This is not what Islam calls for. But rather the remembrance of Allah, this affair of a tawheed, it is related to the beginning of our action, it is related to the actual action, and it is related to the result of the action. This affair of a tawheed, it encompasses the action in all aspects, from the beginning of it to the end of it. That is our motivation. At-Tawheed. It is our motivation for action. It is the reason for which the heavens and the earth were created. It is the reason for which the messengers and prophets were sent. It is the reason for which the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were revealed. It is the reason for which I... And you were created. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create jinn nor mankind except that they should worship me. This is the motivation for our actions. So here you will find, as the question has been put, why is it that people have difficulty in doing the right thing. Why is it that people have difficulty in worshipping Allah, in doing what is wajib, and refraining from what is haram? Why? And the answer is, Ya Ikhwan, Barakallahu Feekum. And this is something especially those from amongst us that have children, pay attention. And those from amongst us that inshallah will have children, pay attention to this. The reason is that when your children are small, or when someone first accepts Islam, you put more importance on the action than you put on the reason for which they should be doing that action. So you teach your children the salah. You teach them how to pray, and they will know how to pray perfectly. But you will never sit down and teach them in detail who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. 
Who is Allah? How do you recognize Allah? If someone was to ask you, what are the proofs that Allah has given you of His existence? How would you answer that? We don't give importance to that. But rather we will sit down and from A to Z we will explain the mannerisms of the salah. We will explain how to pray. We will teach them how to read the Qur'an. We will teach them how to do all of these things. But we will never give them the motivation to do that action. So what happens is, as long as it is interesting for the child, the child is learning something new, he's feeling like he's being challenged, he's doing something that the adults are doing, you will find him doing the action. But once that action becomes old, and it becomes routine, you will find him becoming bored, and looking for something new. And you never gave him the reason why he should be doing that action anyway? And Akhwan, brothers and sisters, telling him that listen, you should be doing this for Allah, and telling this to him every single day is not sufficient. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this word Allah is nothing but a name to him. What have you given him? How have you explained who Allah is? How have you explained the rights of Allah? Because at the end of the day, the salah, it only holds its importance if you know the one for whom you are offering it. We want to read through some words that were written by one of the ulema of Islam. where he wrote, and his name was Muhammad Suleiman al-Tamimi, and he wrote, فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ بِمَا عَرَفْتَ رَبَّكَ This is something we should ask ourselves. He says that if it is said to you, how do you know your Lord? How do you know Allah? How do you know your Lord? فَقُلْ Then say, بِآيَاتِهِ وَمَخْلُوقَاتِهِ I know him through his signs and I know him through his creation. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ From his signs is the night and day. From his signs is the sun and the moon. وَمِنْ مَخْلُوقَاتِهِ السَّمَوَاتُ السَّبْعُ وَالْأَرْضُونَ السَّبْعُ وَمَا فِيهِنَّ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا And from his creation is the seven heavens and the seven earths. وَمَا فِيهِنَّ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا And what is in them and what is in between them. So how do we know Allah? We know Allah through His signs and through His creation. Those signs, this is what Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he writes, those signs that encompass our existence. Everywhere we look, we see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His entire creation. This is how we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we find that if you look at the creation of Allah, that will give you proof of His existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ أَمْ خَلَقُوا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَلْ لَا يُقِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, were they created out of nothing? Did they just come into existence without anyone actually creating them? Am humul khaliqun? Or did they themselves create something? Yani these are not only ayat of the Qur'an, but these are intellectual questions. That someone who has real intellect and real intelligence, and he is not a blind follower of science. 
And if he sits back and he thinks, he will find that his intellect and his rationality will answer this question for him. أَمْ خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ That he will ask, is it possible that all of this which is surrounding us, this is stuff, and these are points, ikhwan, that we need to ponder over. As simple as they seem, one day you need to sit down and ponder over this. Think about this. That were you created out of nothing, that nothing created you? Or is it that you yourself are a creator, that you've created some of this? Because if you haven't created some of this, and you are a man, then is it possible that another man has created something like this? Am khalaqu samawati wal ard? Or did you create the heavens and the earth? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَنْ يَخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا لَا Those things that these people worship, whether it is from amongst the men, or it is from amongst the angels, or it is from amongst the jinn, or it is from amongst the creation of Allah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَنْ يَخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا وَلَا وَجْتَمَعُوا لَا These people that you call upon from other than Allah, they have not even created a fly. Even if they were to gather together to do so. Ask yourself, Ya Ikhwan, as far as science has gotten in trying to negate the existence of Allah, Have they been able to bring into life? Yani, they're saying that this creation of ours, this universe, has been created out of a big bang. So we say to them, create a little bang that will create a fly. If all of this can be created out of a simple bang, then why don't you create a little bang? which will create at least a fly. At least a fly. All of this can come out of nothingness. All of this can come out of nothing. But you cannot do this over the last how many years you cannot do it with a single fly. So this is a challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَنْ يَقْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا وَلَا وَجْتَمَعُوا لَا Even if they were to gather together, they were to join forces, they would not be able to create a fly. So this creation that we inhabit, it is a sign that there is a creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the first sign that we use to recognize our Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is His creation. He continues and He says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ He says that from His signs, From his signs is night and day. وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ The sun and the moon. Ayat. Signs are of two types. You have ayat kawniya. These are those ayat that we can witness with our eyes. The sun, the moon, the heavens, the earth, the stars, the mountains, the trees, the rivers. All of these things have been mentioned as ayat, as verses or signs. Because in them is a proof of their creator. Yani when we look at these signs and we find no deficiencies in them, we find nothing in them that negates the existence of a creator. They're perfect. In it are signs. That the one who has intellect and the one who takes the time to ponder over these signs, he will see that indeed there is a creator. So the Shaykh, he writes, فَكَيْفَ يَجْحَدُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهَ جَلَّ وَعَلَىٰ How is it that someone, he can negate the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That he should say there is no Lord for any of this, there is no creator for any of this. Did all of this come 
without a creator? And if there is a creator other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then bring him and show us what he has created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَمْ جَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَكَاءَ خَلَقُوا كَخَلْقِهِ فَتَشَابَهَ الْخَلْقُ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, have they created for Allah partners who have also created creations similar to the creation of Allah. So both of these creations have become similar to them. قُلِ اللَّهُ خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ الْوَاهِدُ الْقَهَّارِ Say to them, indeed it is Allah who has created everything. So this is one type of sign, one type of ayah. The other type of ayah, which is more well known, is ayat al-Qur'aniyya. You have ayat in the Qur'an, the ayah in the Qur'an is an ayah. But then you have ayat, the sun is an ayah, the moon is an ayah. All of these things are signs of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They give us proof of His perfection, of His attributes, of His names. And they give us proof that He is the one who is alone worthy of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ اللَّيْلَ سَرْمَدًا سَرْمَدًا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَأْتِيكُمْ Say to them that if Allah was to put night upon you forever until the day of judgment, man ilahun ghayrullahi yatikum midiya. Which God do you have other than Allah that will bring light to you? Afala tasma'un? Do you not hear this? Do you not hear this speech? And this is a question, Ya Ikhwan. The one who hears, he should be able to understand this. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُ مِنْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ النَّهَارَ سَرْمَدَا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِلَيْلِ تَسْكُنُونَ فِيهِ Say to them, if Allah was to cause day to remain upon you forever until the day of judgment, which God do you have other than Allah that will come and remove it? Afala tubusirun. Do you not look at these signs? Do you not look and ponder over this? وَمِن رَحْمَتِهِ جَعَلَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارِ لِتَسْكُنُوا فِيهِ وَلِتَبْتَغُوا مِن فَضْلِهِ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says indeed from His mercy. This is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that He gave you night and day. He did not just give you night and He did not just give you day. So He gave you night to rest in, to gain your strength back, to relax in. While well, He gave you the day to seek out the provisions for yourself and your family. وَالنَّهَارَ لِتَسْكُنُوا فِيهِ وَلِتَبْتَغُوا مِن فَضْلِهِ That you should seek out His blessings. وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you may be thankful. The night and the day is from the greatest signs of Allah. That we do not have night at all times and we do not have day at all times. Because indeed if that was the case, then how difficult it would be to benefit. How difficult it would be to gain what we need. But rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused night and day to be upon you, both. So that you may seek out His blessings in one and rest and relax in the other. He continues, what is the dalil? I mean, this was his karam, what is the dalil? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, he says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ From his signs, 
is the night and the day, the sun and the moon. لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا للقمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلقهن. Do not bow down in prostration to the sun. Do not bow down in prostration to the moon. But rather bow down to Allah, the one who created them. إن كنتم إياه تعبدون. If you are indeed from those who worship Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Allah الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن. He says, indeed, Allah is the one who created the seven heavens and from the earth that which was like it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا. The one who created seven heavens, one upon the other. ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت. فرجع البصر هل ترى من فطور. He is the one who created seven heavens one upon the other. You do not see any deficiencies, any عيب in the creation of Allah. Look again. Do you see anything which is wrong with it? Allah سبحانه وتعالى He says. إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ Indeed, your Lord, it is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days. ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ Then He rose over the throne. يُغْشِ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارِ يَطْلُبُهُ He causes the night to come upon the day, the day to come upon the night, seeking it out. All of these things, ya ikhwan, are from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those things that we should pay attention to and cause our children to also look at. Then after you gain the understanding that these are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a sign that there is a Lord for all of these things. Then cause them to understand that yes, the sun, look at the greatness of its creation. The moon, look at the greatness of the creation of the moon. Look at the earth. If you roam the earth, you will see the greatness and the beauty which is in the earth. So if you see the greatness of Allah, or if you see greatness in all of these things, which are the creation of Allah, then what do you think of the greatness of the one who created these things? If this sun, which gives you benefit, can also be the cause of your destruction, this night and day, which revolve around each other so perfectly, Try, ya ikhwan, and to see how difficult it is to work during the night and sleep during the day. Try and see how difficult it is. And see if anyone ever gets used to it. Everyone I've asked, from those who work the night and sleep during the day, and you ask them, so on your days off, what do you do? Do you sleep? During the day, and are you still awake at night? What do you think they do? La, they always sleep during the night, and they're awake during the day. They can work nights, ya ikhwan, for their entire life. But on their day off, they will always sleep at night and be awake during the day. So after you recognize this, after you recognize this perfect system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause you to inhabit. Then know that the Rabb, the Lord of these things, huwal ma'bud. He is the one who should be worshipped. It is Allah who should be worshipped. And indeed the perfection and the unity of this creation gives proof to the perfection and the singleness of his creator. وَالرَّبُّ هُوَ الْمَعْبُودِ Ar-Rabb, the Lord of these things, and it is He who should be worshipped. وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى The proof 
is a statement of Allah the Most High. Ya ayyuhan nasu abudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. O mankind, worship your Lord who created you and He created those that came before you so that you may be from those who have taqwa. الذي جعل لكم الأرض فراشا والسماء بناء وأنزل من السماء ماء فأخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم. The one who created the earth, he made the earth as something you can walk upon. والسماء بناء, he made the heavens as a canopy over you, and he caused water to come down from the heavens. And cause crops to come forth for you. فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Do not make partners for Allah, and indeed you are from those who know. Yani, did Allah have a partner in creating you? La. Did Allah have a partner in creating those that came before you? No. Did Allah have a partner when He made this earth for you to reside upon? No. Did Allah have a partner when He created the heavens? No. Did Allah have a partner when He caused the earth, when He caused the water to come down, the crops to come forth? So if Allah did not have a partner in any of these actions, then how is it that we can give a partner to Allah in His worship? How is it that in all of these actions, all of these things that we have and that we benefit from, we Allah had no partner. It was Allah alone and without these things, but when it is time to be thankful to Allah, we are thankful to Allah and we are thankful to Fulan bin Allah. We are thankful to Allah and we are thankful to this person, or to this angel, or to this prophet, or to this messenger. And we are talking about that thankfulness which is worship. We are talking about that thankfulness which is worship. Shaykh, he writes, Ya Ayyuhun Nas. Yani, this is a call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of mankind. The believers from amongst them and the kuffar. All of them, they should recognize these signs. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala. He writes, Al-Khaliqu lihadihi al-Ashya'a he writes, the creator of these things. This is in his tafsir of this ayah. The creator of these things, the heavens, the earth, the night, the day, us, those who came before us. It is he who deserves worship. He is the one who deserves all of the categories of worship. From Islam, to Iman, to Ihsan. So, all categories of worship, they all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single one of them belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it is salah, whether it is the physical acts of worship that we do, salah, sound, hajj, umrah, sadaqah, all of these are to be done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua for Allah, sajda, ruku' for Allah, adhab, slaughtering for Allah. All of these actions should be only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship is of two types. Worship, it is of two types. So you have ibadah amma, general worship, which is something that the entire creation does. So all of them are the slaves of Allah, the believers and the kuffar, the fasiq, the sinner, the munafiq, all of them are ibadullah. They are all the servants of Allah. Meaning what? That they are under the mashi'ah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They can only do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for them to do. It is obligatory upon them to worship Allah. 
So it is not only obligatory upon the believers, the worship of Allah is obligatory upon everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِن كُلُّ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا آتِ الرَّحْمَانِ عَبْدًا There is none in the heavens and the earth except that they will come to Ar-Rahman Abda as a slave. Then you have Ubudiya Khasa. That which is more specific. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to Shaytan, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. My servants, you will not have any power over them. So there are two different levels of ubudiyah. You have ubudiyah amma, general, in that it is obligatory for everyone to worship Allah. And then you have khasa, which is specific to the believers, specific to the Muslims. What is the meaning of ibadah now? So we have gone over the signs and verses that show us that there is a Creator. We have gone over that all of these signs of Allah, the creation of Allah gives proof to the existence of a Lord who created them. And that if there is a Lord who created this perfection, then indeed that Lord is deserving of worship. So what is this worship? And we will end with this insha'Allah ta'ala. Insha'Allah in a future time, continue on with the topic. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he defines worship. Al-ibadah. Ismun jami'un li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allahu min al-aqwal wal-a'mal al-zahira wal-batina. He writes, worship, it is an all-inclusive word, which includes in it everything which is beloved to Allah from statements and actions, whether they are done openly or they are hidden actions, any actions of the heart. So this is worship, doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. What is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that Allah has ordered us with, it is worship. Everything that He has ordered us to leave off, whether it is something to leave off doing by our hands, or to leave off in our hearts, it is worship. Because worship can be done with the tongue, Worship can be done with the heart, and it is done with the limbs. You do it upon the tongue when you make dhikr of Allah. When you say the shahadatain, say Allahu Akbar, you say Alhamdulillah. When in your heart, you have fear of Allah, this is worship. When in your heart, you turn to Allah for help, this is worship. When in your heart, you have a desire to meet Allah. This is worship. And then indeed, the worship of your limbs is apparent. The salah, the siyam, all of these things is from the worship of your limbs. Insha'Allah ta'ala, we will stop with this. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Allah يجزيكم الخير. The نعم. Even the animals, even the animals, they are slaves to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and their worship is simply doing what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has ordered them to do that they remain within the realms of their creation and they do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for them to do. This is their worship. And as far as them having worship from the likes of what mankind has from worship or from what the jinn have from worship, then to the best of my knowledge, I have not read anything 
uh, in the Quran or the Ahadith which would give proof to that. Allah Ta'ala A'lam. Naam. Naam, ya akhi. Naam. Allah knows best. I do not know about that. There is nothing in the Quran which gives proof to a Big Bang theory, uh, at least in the sense that science lays it out, firstly. Secondly, uh, I believe there is a verse in the Quran which has something of that sense in it. But as, the, as a Muslim, we do not attempt to define that with the Big Bang theory for two reasons. Firstly, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something generally, then if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something generally, we leave it in that general meaning unless there is a proof from the Quran or the Sunnah that gives it a more specific meaning. So we do not use science to explain the Qur'an. Because science is something which changes. Science is something which changes. You will never find science using the word truth. You never find science using the word truth. They won't say that something is true. And the Qur'an deals with truth. So we do not use science to explain it. If there is verses in the Qur'an that are general in meaning, we leave them general in meaning until there comes something in the Qur'an or in the Sunnah which explains those verses. Wallahu ta'ala a'ala. Naam, Is doing like group zikr, is that an acceptable form of worship according to the Qur'an and Sunnah? There is a hadith in Sunan al-Darimi. Uh, it is an authentic hadith reported by Abu Musa al-Ash'ari that he noticed some people sitting in the masajid after the death of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam making group dhikr. And he went to Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu it's from amongst the companions and they were making group dhikr and they had rocks in their hands and they were throwing these rocks and in this manner. He went to Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ibn Mas'ud proceeded to the masjid to refute their action because there is nothing found in the sunnah of dhikr being made in this fashion or in this manner. Allahu ta'ala anhu. Tayyib insha'Allah. What is intended by internal actions is, for example, Iman. When one has Iman, this is an internal action. It is not an external action. Now, Iman is an affair of the heart. But, now when you offer Salah, when you fast, when you give Zakah, all of these actions are apparent actions. You do them with your limbs. Even if no one witnesses them, they can be witnessed by the human eye. So these are apparent actions. The link between them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, afwan, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He says, Ala fil jasad mudgha, Ida salahat, salah al jasad kulluh, Wa ida fasadat, fasad al jasad kulluh, Ala wa hiya al qalb. He said that, indeed, is there not a morsel of flesh in the body? That when it is affected, if it is pure, if it is purified, the entire body becomes clean, the entire body becomes purified. And if it becomes corrupt, the entire body becomes corrupt, is it not the heart? So what is in the heart has an effect 
of what is upon the limbs. And it is not correct to say, when we are advised not to do an action, or that we should do an action, that we should say, he don't judge me, my iman is in my heart. Naam, your iman is in your heart, but what is in your heart eventually leaks out upon your limbs. It is not that you will have one thing in your heart and you will do something else upon your limbs, except that you are doing that purposefully. Except that you are doing it knowingly. And then of course this one is labeled as a munafiq, the one who has kufr in his heart, and he has iman upon his limbs. Allah ta'ala a'lam, and Allah ta'ala knows best. Naam, yafi. Just to refer on atheism, atheism comes to us What we say to them, and the first thing I will say to all the brothers and sisters, Barakallahu Feekum, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا عَلَيْكَ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ What is upon you, the only thing upon you is to make the message known. And do not be distracted when you say that, you know, we cannot use Qur'an and Sunnah with them to refute them, that no, in certain aspects you can still use Qur'an and Sunnah. As far as tsunamis and these affairs that take place upon the face of the earth. Then we say regarding them, firstly that yes, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has built it. Regardless of how evil an action is, it does not take place without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willing that action to take place. And we all know, barakallahu feekum, that from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that some very affairs which are disturbing to the human mind, they take place. And we see them to be evil. From the murder of children, the rape of children, all of these affairs which are very ugly affairs. But, as believers we say, they did not take place without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not take place without the permission of Allah. This is why from Iman, وَن تُؤْمِنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَن تُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدَرِ خَيْلِهِ وَشَرِّهِ when the Messenger of Allah described Iman, he said, What belief in Allah, in His angels, in His books, in His messengers in the last day, and in the Qadr, the good of it, and the bad of it. So the Qadr of Allah encompasses all things, good or bad. Nothing exits the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every action which is done is created by Allah. Every action. The one who prays, his action is created by Allah, the one who does not pray, his action is created by Allah. But, where an action may be evil in regards to us, as the doer of that action. Naam? So someone kills. Evil action in regards to the doer. Someone steals, someone rapes. Someone maims, someone does all of these evil actions in regards to the doer. The Muslim does not say it is an evil action in regards to the Creator. So the Creator did not do something evil by creating it. Everything is, in, everything is good in regards to the Creator. And the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created these actions was to put forth a choice to the children of Ad. Where is the test? If Allah did not create these evil actions, is there a test? And the only thing we can do would be good deeds. So Islamically, our belief is yes, the action is evil in regards to the doer of the action. When the, when the person doing it does the action, it is an evil action. But in regards to the creator of it, then it is not an evil. But rather, there is wisdom in the creation of that action. When Allah created these actions, there was wisdom in their creation. And the wisdom was to put forth a choice to mankind.
and the same falls into these tsunamis and and this death and uh, any type of disease what have you these are all the Muslims we believe they are tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this life to us is a test and the true abode will be the next life whether it is the fire of al-Jahannam or it is the gardens of paradise Wallahu ta'ala and Allah knows best Ali Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said one day when giving a sermon to the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhum which was closer to the end of his life and when he was giving the sermon it caused the people to become emotional they saw it to be something like a lost sermon so they asked the Messenger of Allah for some advice so he says فَمَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَرَىٰ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Whomsoever lives from amongst you will see much differentiation, much division. فَقَدْ صَدَقَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ Indeed, the Messenger of Allah spoke the truth. And this, was, this is from the signs of His Messengers, of His Prophet. That indeed, we see differentiation from amongst the Muslims. They are divided. From the beginning, they are divided. There is a brother I met who, alhamdulillah, he used to be a Hindu. And Allah guided him to Islam. Allahu Akbar. He guided him to Islam. But now, his companions have put to him another choice. You are Muslim now, but what madhab are you going to follow? So he is presently in the case where he is trying to figure out what madhab he is going to follow. So right from the beginning, we put division amongst ourselves. Right from the beginning, we put division amongst ourselves. So the Messenger of Allah, he said, the hal, what is the solution to the brother's problem? Whosoever lives from amongst you will see much differentiation. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّتِي خُلِفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِّينَ مِنْ بَعْضِي Upon you is my sunnah. This is your medicine. The disease is differentiation, your medicine is the sunnah. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي Upon you is my sunnah. وَسُنَّةِ خُلِفَاءَ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِّينَ مِنْ بَعْضِي And the rightly guided khulifa after me. تَمَسَّكُ بِهَا Hold on to it. وَعَضُّ عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِثِ Bite onto it with your molded teeth. وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ Be aware of newly invented matters. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ بِدَعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ For every innovation or every bid'ah is going astray. Allah SWT says, فَإِن تَنَازَعَتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Indeed, if you disagree in anything, Bring it back to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa You will find the solution to all your problems in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنِّي تَارِكٌ فِيكُمْ مَا إِن تَمَسَّقْتُمْ بِهِ لَن تُضِلُّ بَعْدِي أَبَدًا كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَسُنَّتِي He said, I am leaving with you two things. I am leaving with you that which if you were to grab onto it, you will never go astray after me. Kitab Allah wa Sunnati, the book of Allah and my Sunnah. And you find many problems come when we leave off the book of Allah and we leave off the Sunnah to take the opinions of men. The Quran, alhamdulillah, ya ikhwan, clarifies affairs completely. Clarifies com- affairs very easy for men to understand. Very easy for us to understand. The sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, explains those areas of the Qur'an that need explanation. Follow the deleet. 
Follow the Dalil. Anyone says anything to you, follow the Dalil. Ask them for their proof. What is your proof? From the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger, what is your proof?